In this video tutorial, we'll discuss how to set up a RAID array on a Buffalo 4-Drive link station or Terra Station NAS device. To set up the RAID configuration, we need to go into the uh, NAS device's web administration. So we can do that by double-clicking on NAS Navigator and finding the IP address. Or you can simply type the IP address or host name directly into a web browser. Once NAS Navigator is finished scanning for the device, we can go ahead and right-click on it and press the Open Web Settings button, and it'll actually open up a web page uh, with the uh, URL already inserted into it so we can log in. The username is admin and the password uh, by default is password all lowercase so unless you've changed it you can type in admin and password to log in. By default you'll log into the shared folders folder setup area. Um, here we can see the uh, condition of the current RAID array. I don't have anything on it and it's 800 just under a terabyte. Uh, to change the RAID array we'll have to go to the systems area and then click on the storage tab. Now this is for a Terra station, but the link station configuration for a four drive unit is, uh, is the same, so you can follow those steps as well. Uh, once you've clicked on the storage tab, it will scan and show you uh, all the disks. These are four 500 gig disks, and below that it'll show you the uh, RAID array configuration. So by default, this unit's in RAID 6 by default, and in most cases people would run a four drive unit in RAID 5, so if we want to change that, actually the first step will be to delete this uh, current RAID 6 array, and to do that we'll click on the Array 1 option. We scroll down, uh, it'll show all the disks that are in the RAID array, and then we can press the Delete RAID Array button. Now, I will caution, as will all of the uh, on-screen UIs, that uh, deleting the RAID Array will remove all of the data that's on all of those disks that are in the RAID Array. So we'll ask you to confirm that. All of your settings, like network settings and host name settings, etc., won't change, but the data on the, the hard drives, uh, the user data, will. So we do want to make sure that you have a backup of that or that you don't mind that the data is erased. If it's a brand new unit, there won't be any data on it. So we can press the Apply button, and it will ask us to uh, enter a four-digit random code just to make sure we didn't uh, slip up and accidentally press the wrong button. Once we press apply, it will verify that number and then start the RAID array deletion process. Uh, this process can take one to two minutes depending on your configuration, uh, and it is uh, shown with uh, a status indicator like this. Now that the RAID array is deleted, uh, we'll return to the folder setup page automatically, and you'll see that the four disks are, are shown. These are 500 gigabyte disks, and uh, they're individually assigned, so there's actually no RAID array now. So we'll go ahead and need to create a new RAID array, and that's done basically through the same process. We'll need to click on the Systems tab, and then the Storage uh, subfolder subcategory, and it'll scan for all the disk information again, and we'll be able to create a new array. Now on four drive units, uh, you actually have the ability to create multiple arrays, such as two RAID 1 uh, arrays that are separate. But if you're going to create one large array, you'll go ahead and click on the Array 1 option, and uh, we'll select which disks we want to use. Uh, so it's scanning for those at this moment. And uh, we'll use this pull-down menu to select our RAID mode. So this device supports uh, RAID 0, 1, 5, 10, and 6, with uh, RAID 6 and 10 requiring four drives, RAID 5 requiring three or more drives, and RAID 1 or 0 requiring two or more drives. So it's a popular configuration with four disks to run RAID 5, so we'll go ahead and select that, and then we can select which disks we want to include. Upon selecting disk 3, I now have three disks, and the uh, Create RAID Array button uh, will uh, go solid. Uh, in this case, I want to use all four disks, though, so I can select all four, or uh, if I want, I can just press this uh, to select them all at one time. I'll press Create RAID Array. I'll confirm that I want to create that RAID array across all four of those disks. Pressing apply will uh, move us to the next step, and once again I'll enter the four-digit random code just to make sure that this is exactly what I wanted to do, and I'll press apply. It'll verify that number and basically go through a very similar process it did when we deleted the first array. So you'll get a progress window and it'll add each drive to the RAID array and then automatically finish on its own. Okay, now that the RAID array has been created, we can see that the uh, device now shows one a RAID array, one with uh, three 500 gig drives worth of data, and then a 500 gig drive, a 500 gig drive worth of data spread across has parity information. 
Um, so we do return back to the folder setup area and you can see that there's no user shares because we erased all the information. So the very first uh, step that might be popular is to create a, uh, a first share, maybe a default share directory or something like that. You can go ahead and do that and it'll assign that onto that uh, array. And basically now you're uh, ready to go with the new RAID array configuration, um, just like it was out of the box. Now, when you do change a RAID array configuration on a Buffalo NAS device, it will uh, automatically start a RAID synchronization test just to verify the uh, integrity of the RAID array. And that may cause a yellow light to turn on on the front of your device. You can monitor the progress of that by going back to the RAID array information area by clicking on system and then clicking on the storage subcategory tab. And uh, under the RAID array properties, it'll actually report to you uh, the status as checking. Um, and then you can determine how far it is uh, along in the process. So here we see the status is checking. We scroll to the right here, we can see we're uh, just over half a percent complete and roughly how long it'll take for that scan to complete. Uh, while this scan is going, uh, it is completely in the background and uh, you can continue to use the device and even start backups and transferring uh, files, create shares and you know change settings as much as you want uh, and that'll just run in the background. You may see a minimal performance impact while that scan is, uh, is occurring. However, when it's uh, done, um, your performance will return to normal and uh, the yellow light will go off once it's completed. So that wraps up how to set up a RAID array on a Buffalo 4 drive, LinkStation or TerraStation NAS.